Peace to the saints. This topic was requested some time ago uh, by a member. I was a little bit wary of doing it, but I just saw another interview with Gates and I was like, the, the boy going too far. And I do want to say shout out to Gates. You know, he's a real one. This is no disrespect to Gates on a personal level, but we still going to have to set a few things right. You dig? And me being the type of guy I am, we're going to hear it from the horse's mouth. So what I'll do is I'll play a few clips where Gates is talking the kind of wild things he talks, and we're going to go from there. And this will be a great uh, education for you in terms of morality, in terms of not saying too much, uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, shout out to Nurse Jay Breezy, writes, this is quite interesting. I used to be a listener of his music. Indeed, the music is fire. We can't deny that. Then the more I've listened, observed, and did some research, I had to delete all his songs due to him being somewhat suspect. Bruh, I mean, for sure. Uh, and the more I've heard him do interviews, I'm like, bruh, just rap, man. Quit doing all this. Just rap, bruh. Because the more I hear you talk, ah, I can't even better listen to the music. Hurts my heart. And look, when I talk to you and do a review of someone's interview, what have you, you know, it might be funny, but it's always going to be educational, you dig? Uh, so we're about to learn something. Get your notepads out. Here we go. I'm like you. I've yeah. had my wife literally in my mouth multiple times. You know what I'm First off, already. Uh, number one, I remember I actually used to think were fake. I used to think that it didn't exist in real life. I figured it was just like some stuff they do on maybe... Uh, you know, it was like a digital effect or uh, maybe these chicks weren't chicks. I usually, I was like, man, like, how's that even possible? Because in, in my life experience, I never encountered that. Then I hollered at this one super thick Latina in a Starbucks in LA. And I actually, man, I was just living like an animal. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I had this blonde chick. She used to stay on uh, Laurel Canyon uh, Boulevard in Hollywood. You heard me right by the Laugh Factory. She was a dirtbag, so I didn't mind doing her dirty. She was a real dirtbag. Anyways, I took this thick Latina over there and wore her out. You heard me? I feel like I got to the bottom of that thing. You heard me? All up in the back wall. And um, and sure enough, she, she and I was just like, wow, that's a real thing. So just in case you're at home wondering, like, do something exist in the real world? Swirtle, swirtle. Yeah, it's not just a Pokemon. These chicks really can. It does happen. And that was the first one. I've experienced two of them. The other one was this turbo thick white woman in Cincinnati. She's actually older, but oh my gosh, she was sick. I was the first black guy she ever been with. You dig? Like Barack Obama, first black guy in the White House. Anyway, she was super thick. I actually ended up maxing her out outside of a, a salsa dancing venue. It was crazy. You heard me? But here's the thing that kind of shocked me. If she had like a bath towel ready, like she just knew she was a and she knew it was going to pop off. I don't know how she predicted all this. Damn near she might have set it up herself. But anyway, she had a whole bath towel ready to go. It was crazy. The one thing that's nice about this is when you max them out and they start, you feel like you did something. You know, it's like a receipt that shows that you really didn't beat it down. Um, but do I prefer squirt? For sure, definitely not, because it's, it's just a lot of cleanup. You know, it's a lot of unnecessary cleanup, right? I don't need all that in my life. I prefer to keep it simple. That's just me. Ain't, Ain't nothing like, like having your girl ride your face and then things go, you know. But the thing is, though, the re See, the, this guy right here, his first thing out of his mouth is he says, my wife, and then starts talking after that. For me, I'm already out. Once you did that, I'm out, bruh. I can't respect it because I don't want to know what you do with your wife. That's your own personal business. And I would never tell if I had a wife, I wouldn't tell what I do with my wife because a guy might say, oh, oh, she do what? Oh, oh, she, she take it down to the ball. Wait, what? She do what? What you're doing is you're marketing. You're marketing your wife's prowess or her merits, which are only going to drive interest from other males, which puts evil, wicked, envious thoughts on their mind. It creates an appetite in them that might not have existed before. It exposes your wife. And that, those are things you should keep private. As a man, you're supposed to be the protector of your woman, not the one who's advertising her. Now, unless you're a cold pea, you dig, and she's actually product, then yeah, go ahead and advertise her. But if you're a square and you expect your wife to only be for you, 
you'd be a fool to be putting her on front street like that. It's rather disgusting. And it's even worse when females advertise themselves, especially when they're not supposed to be single. Reason I brought up the piss thing is you might have a crazy night and the sheets are fucked. Mattress gets wet. You wake up the next morning, it's a, lot, a little pissy of a smell. You gotta have a f room. The f room? Yeah. Nice. You got a f room. And you, you got, got a f room in the sleep. See, now this guy's talking about, you know, getting physical with his female and she's and then you wake up and you have the smell of urine. And my understanding is that scientifically in that mixture that there is uh, one component of it, which is urine. Now, fortunately, I've never had a main chick who does this. And no disrespect to the sisters who do, you know, do what you do. Uh, that's how your body works, you know, let's work it. But these kinds of discussions, a modest woman would be embarrassed to hear her husband talking about her like that. It's quite vile. Further, there's some things that you should keep to yourself. It is not masculine to be so verbose or to be so talkative and tell all your business. That is the opposite of masculine. It's quite feminine to have loose lips and then end up sinking the ship, you dig? So this is a sad thing to see among men. Now granted, it's an interview. We expect people to talk, but we don't expect you to air your dirty laundry. And what I would expect from you guys is that you're picking up this game and knowing that sometimes it's good to listen. Sometimes it's good to be brief. And other times it's wise to change the topic of conversation. And if somebody start asking me about my wife's behaviors, to say I would give you the cold look would be an understatement. Sleep room. Yeah. That's interesting. So you you will just designate. A playroom and a lay room. I don't even like the word. I don't like the word. I just say it so everybody know what I'm talking about. Right. But it's spiritual. It's spiritual unification. I pray before I have sleep. This is spiritual. You pray before. Yes. Every time. Every time is spiritual. See, now Gates makes good music, but sometimes he says things. I'm like Gates. I don't know if I believe you. My brother said number one. He said, you know, is spiritual. Okay, bro. Cool, man. Now that sounds like something you might tell to a dumb broad. You feel me? You tell you might tell her that to 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 spiritually lift them drawers up off her, but. Uh, is it spiritual? Eh, maybe sometimes. Maybe with a woman you love. But when he says he prays every time before, nah, I, I can't say that I believe that. I feel like every now and then you need it in your life and you go, go ahead and get it in when you could get it in. And especially a guy like this, as he reveals later, he actually likes to have it in public, which is a whole nother weird thing that we'll talk about. But if you're having in public do i think that he took out the time like hold on before i go ahead and beat this down uh let me go ahead and cleanse myself do woo do clean myself in the proper islamic way and then go ahead and make perform salah and pray before i go ahead and wear this out in public now i highly doubt he does that and the problem with people who talk too much is that they they create a lot of responsibilities and they make a lot of oaths that they have to live up to and rarely can we live up to all the things that we say so sometimes it's wise to just shut up just shut up. I'm not talking to Gates. I'm talking to all of us, myself included. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I during do, you'll pray during. Yeah, I just be thanking God. Would you ever stop and be like, "Give me a sec"? No, this man, no, no, no. but just in your head. He he didn't went from saying I pray before every time. Now he said I pray during. Uh, I think we can all be honest. The only time we ever even think of God is at the end when you getting off of me. When oh. God, oh, oh God, stop, stop moving, stop moving, stop, uh, stop sucking. You try to grab her forehead and peel her off you. you. Gotta love those hard workers. They want every ounce. And I appreciate that. You feel me? In a real way. Um, but I think the only time we invoke the Lord's name is at the end. And, you know, I, I remember, you know, Richard Pryor had said, what do atheists say when they come? Because for sure, I'd be like, oh, God, I, I'll be trying to maintain masculinity, though. The, the the nut just 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 it just take all the masculinity out of me, Irby. Oh man, that's one time I just hope nobody want to throw hands. It would be very you know right after you didn't got one off or when you're in the process of somebody just if Debo busts in the room like now I want my fade. I would just have to tell him like bro I can't even do it right now. I, I gotta turn this fade down. Oh, carrying on. No, I said out loud. Like if, if like if I'm just in it. 
and I'm just really punching that. I'm talking about punching that in her stomach. I just be like, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because this, I never thought, like, coming from where I come from, me, I know people look at me like Kevin Gates, but I don't see Kevin Gates. Right. I see regular old Kevin. So I think this was a meaningful insight into his psyche when he says, you know, he's essentially experiencing gratitude during intercourse, especially when he's dealing with a very attractive woman. And he says, you know, others see Kevin Gates, which is to say the groupie sees Kevin Gates, which is why she's there bent over style. But when he looks in the mirror, he sees, quote, regular old Kevin. And I think that's a meaningful thing for you guys to understand when you look at most people. This is a psychology that most people have, uh, you know, even successful people, especially if they weren't successful their whole life and or revered or popular or well respected their whole life. If they reinvented themselves then they tend to have this kind of complex that he describes to you, this psychology. And especially when you look at men, a lot of males use their wealth or they seek to acquire wealth and status so that they can get women. And so they're gonna have this kind of complex that he has. And you know, in my case, I was, I was very fortunate in as much as you know, I've always been favored. And that's why I really love women because they've always favored me and treated me well and helped me profit, you heard me? Um, but I, I can dig what he's saying in that he, he's just thankful, like, man, I never thought I would smash a chick like this because he wasn't smashing top of the line his whole life, you dig? And, you know, shout out to, to everybody to let you know that you can make a come up and you can achieve things that you never expected. Not to say that dealing with a thick is a real achievement. I'm like, man, it's a blessing to be hitting a big you got a body of uh, a, 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 a work I'm of art about, in front of you. I'm talking about I got a work of art. I'm talking about I'm talking about just having my way and it's making them mad. Big, I'm gonna hit from no bag. It just it's just a blessing mm. to me because I ain't you know Would I you, ain't grow up just having this in my living room. You know, right? Look, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Man, I, I had it I had it my way the whole way. You dig? <laughs> Quote that from the big homie. I had it my way the whole way. You can ask Mama Burton, man. I remember one time she came home. I was supposed to be at school in high school. Had this thick little thing, little red bone thing, curly hair, beautiful curve on her. And she was a... And uh, my mom just heard something. And then she came and opened my door. And Shorty was like, had my comforter on her. She was hiding behind the door. You know, I've been living like that my whole life, man. And that's why a guy like me, I can really tell you how to deal with these chicks because they don't mean anything to me. Because I had them my whole life. They mean nothing to me. And what you'll find out is anything you have in abundance means nothing to you. You know, what does a dollar mean to a millionaire? Huh? Well, what does a chick mean to a super P? Dun, 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 dun. Carrying on. So that was the first one. We're going to ease in. It, it actually gets like even more and more sus as we go on and it just hurts my heart you know because i i appreciate gates music he has a he has a beautiful rhythm about him but we're about to dig deep into his psychology and as we dig into his psychology you know consider reflecting on yourself if you've read my book the black box you'll see that i often encourage you to reflect on yourself so often we want to look at everybody else without looking in the mirror How much flack you've gotten for this Beyonce bar? Ain't nobody say nothing to me. I do like how you preface the bar with uh, if you guys are. Uh, and in general, uh, that that see that part Ruby, right Ruby there. Rose replied to your to your uh, that to your, part. To be honest, and this is what I'll do respect. See, when a male starts talking about being a. What is he talking about? Generally, he's saying that he's willing to pass his female around like a slobbery blunt. He's saying his wife is a doorknob. Everybody gets a turn. When you're talking about being a you're essentially someone who is willing to give your wife to other males. And you probably are one who likes to watch such things, which is, a, is the proper term for this kind of thing. And this has been generally portrayed to be uh, white males to, to like such a thing. But w w whatever the case may be in terms of the preponderance of certain ethnic groups, it, it's a perversion either way. And 
in my opinion, I find this to be edging on by edging. I mean, it's straight. You heard me? You're guzzling Skittles at this point. Because number one, when your mind is pure and free from perversion, this kind of thing would never cross your mind unless you lost your mind. I'll give you an example. And I remember going through the, these, these visual traumas as a young man. When I was in middle school, this is the first time I saw And I remember when I first saw it was actually on accident. And you might not recall this. Uh, in LA, they used to sell like hot boxes, which are cable boxes that get all of the channels, all the pay-per-view, all the premium channels, HBO, all this good stuff. The youngsters might not even know what I'm talking about, but it essentially unlocked every premium service for free. You pay somebody who works at the cable company, you know, give them 300 bucks, they give you a hot box, and basically for the rest of your life, got everything premium. So anyways, I was channel surfing, and I was in middle school, and then I came across as a woman. I'd never really seen a woman. And so you know, I stopped to see what's up. You know, they got that old school music. Ding, 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 ding. And I'm like, oh man, she is actually, that's what's up. And so I'm watching her, I'm starting to sustain her. And then this dude shows up out of nowhere. And I was like, ah, what is he doing here? And then, you know, he, he strips and starts, you know, doing his thing. And he's like grunting. And I'm like, oh man, I can't watch, I can't watch this. And immediately I turned it off because it was vile to have to observe another male in a state of naked and hear him grunting and groaning and i was like who's filming this why the cameraman keep putting it on his face i don't want to see his face put it on the what is this why they getting the under angle with his balls hanging i don't need to see this focus on the vagina. who's filming this i need to be a director call spike lee this is terrible I had to change the channel and in your youth you can only really watch girl on girl you hear me that's all you can tolerate until you you suffer a downward spiral but it's insidious how the the evil influence of the culture we live in desensitizes the mind to our over culture and now we have everywhere you can't even log into TikTok or instagram without seeing semi uh, images i said that to say this you know, I instinctively knew that was wrong. In Islam, they call it fitra, your natural sense of right and wrong. And so when you hear a guy like Kevin Gates, uh, one, like describing all these practices with his wife, eh, it's like, ah, eh, that's not cool. But then when he's talking about being a which often entails watching your wife get railed by another guy, if you could sit and you find that to be attractive or appealing, that's weird, my boy. I'm not even talking about insecurity or jealousy. I'm talking about visceral disgust. Like you, I'm actually looking at it like that's throw up. Not because it's my wife. I just don't want to watch another dude rail a chick. Like what does this have to do with me? I'm not even having derby. One of the most uh, ingenious things ever said when speaking of is like, why would I want to watch another guy rail a girl? Like I, I want to be in the. You hear me? I want to be the guy railing it, but I really couldn't even do it if it's a guy holding a camera. You hear me? I want there to only be two balls in this whole environment. You hear me? There need to be two balls in one D, and that's mine. Otherwise, it's, it's quite disgusting. You hear me? So that's number one. Carrying on. That's one of the most beautiful women in the world. Like, I sit in a trap with all the monsters. They say the same thing. Like, all I did is say what everybody think. That's fair. You're the most beautiful woman in the world. Like, I would drink your piss. Like, come on, bro. What the f like? And one, I think that he knows how to cultivate the media by saying extreme things. It gets people to pay attention. Like when you say you drink someone's urine. Now this guy might be serious, but you know some people might use this kind of extreme language to get attention. But that's turbo weird. Now everybody been thugged out, man. People growing up on nowadays you feel me like just like i used to watch cartoons when i was a kid these kids watching c and i ain't talking about the british broadcast corporation you hear me they watching got got subscriptions you hear me they premium so that people are growing up on this so there's very little new you could do to a chick and i like to you hear me i like to get in a psyche with it so yeah I'm on the chick face yeah but uh, I, I you ain't gonna on me that's weird that's ultra weird so you kind of go in left field with that. Come on, man. Like, what the f Dante's this, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Why are you yeah. in my mouth? What's that? But I'm just what? saying, like, you got to think. I speak for the that's incarcerated. 
See, that was crazy because he really meant that. He said, right here in my mouth. Like, come on, bro. Like, you you really, you doing too much, my boy. And the, the underlying part that's ultra grimy is, and I'm not saying he has a relationship with Jay-Z. I don't have a personal relationship with Jay-Z, but out of respect that that's his wife, I'm not going to speak up on her like that. It's not a proper thing to do. And him purporting to be a Muslim, it's it's definitely not an Islamic thing to do. In fact, there are many people in the Muslim world who would consider that to be the start of a war. You hear me? They, they want your blood on the soil because of those kind of comments. And you're speaking within the context of a religion where women are supposed to be covered. They're not even supposed to be in the presence of men that they're not related to. They're not supposed to be unprotected by a man. So you're speaking against her protector while purporting to be a Muslim. And this is why I personally find it so challenging to identify with any religion. I just stick with this ism because it's pure. And no one can say that they're a saint because we have to verify that you're a saint. You got to be a fiat issue. We got to confer sainthood upon you. But everybody running around saying that they Muslim. And this is the kind of things uh, that you hear them saying, speaking in terms of, you know, perversion, things that are diametrically opposed to the deen of Islam. Damn, watch these people on TV and everything. Mm -hmm. This is what everybody thinking. This is true. I mean, Beyonce is, we always have talks like, that's like that's like say if this was right here this you know this is my water bottle or this is my wife i feel good knowing that everybody in the world want this what i have was see that's that's crazy because that tells you his his kind of perverse thinking it is one thing to have something which is treasured it is yet another thing to have a woman and to be stimulated or mentally stimulated because of the drive of other males to capture your woman that is perverse and this is how you know he's a he likes to watch guys rail his wife he's a he's into other guys having his wife that drive from other males stimulates him and that is akin to and the boy inching out of the closet he inching out of the closet gates come on man go ahead and hop about that closet bruh and in Islam, it tells the, the woman to cover, which is, you know, it tells the woman to cover herself, and it also dictates what kind of males she can be around. Now, Gates is not following anything Islamic, and in fact is being someone that is dangerous to a practice, dangerous to a religion, because people think he's that, and they're listening to him, and he's speaking words that are in direct contradiction to uh, Islam and the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I'm no representative of religion at all. Carrying on. It's mine. Yeah, I'm winning. Yeah. I'm living y'all dreams every night. So, mm. you know, people, the other people that took it disrespectfully, y'all just scared to say what, y'all scared to be who y'all are, I guess. Well, mm -hmm. By I the way. I don't put that much thought into stuff. I just speak from the heart. At what point in time did you realize in life that was Look, and Gates is really trivializing something that'll get you. That's why I had to speak up on this. Gates is speaking as though, you know, I'm just saying what's obvious. Everyone thinks Beyonce is attractive. I'm just letting it be known. Oh, okay, bro. And because something is obvious, does that mean it needs to be stated? I would say the opposite is true. If it's obvious, it's so clear that what's understood need not be said. That's a phrase in the African-American speech culture. You think he would have heard it. What's understood need not be said. So close your mouth. And more importantly, we can be real that I've seen quarrels over females get people. Huh? I've seen it in relationships, in friendships. Huh? Yeah, people are sensitive about that. I would stay away from that. Me, I don't even like to hug my friends and family's girl. You heard me? Like, we show up to a holiday, like, you heard me? I, I high five. You heard me? If I even, I don't even really want to touch her. I give her a handshake. I high five her. I don't even want to put my arm around her because that's not my property. It don't belong to me. It belong to that man. Let her stay on that side. You know, part of it is, you know, chicks, stay, they get a whiff of me. You know, this charm will wear them down on the low low. I don't need those kind of problems. Keep her at a distance. She's yours, not mine keep her back from a you dig and mine she don't like to be around other dudes anyway she don't want to slap fives she don't want to greet she nah she going helen keller out here huh 
She don't even want guys talking directly to her. Delivered a message through the big homie, huh? And one thing I've never done, there have been times I might see a chick attractive out in the public. She would have duty looked like a sucker. So I got to make an inquiry. Hey, is this your girl? Half the time when I say that, shorty speak up like, nah, that's not my man. That's my friend. You know, then I go ahead and throw my bid in. But in the rare instances, I'm like, is this your man? And he, and he like, or he like, yeah, that's my girl. Or she's like, yeah, that's my man. I say, okay. Now I will turn to that man and say, well done. And I'm carrying on about my business. Because now my affairs there are wrapped up. Huh? Have some decency about yourself as a man. Controlled by your and carnal desires. It's a primitive way to live. Via PayPal, Ivan writes, just hopped on the live. Kevin Gates is my favorite rapper, bruh. I feel you. <laughs> the songs be pristine. But the man says the wildest things. Indeed. And I'm going to tell you why. Stay tuned. Writes, women, typically low class ones, seem to love him. Oh, indeed. It's, it's the ones. And it's the white girls who love black guys, the disgusting ones. He writes, I've even heard them call him a genius. Well, that would be a major exaggeration. <laughs> he makes good music, but genius should be reserved for people who are making major improvements in the world. I'm excited that the big homie put the red pen to Gates. Oh, indeed, and it's no disrespect. I still respect uh, Gates as a man, and I'm not speaking disrespectfully. I'm speaking analytically. And I would hope that anything I would say on this camera, I would say straight to his face. And I would. Right? It's because the music is fire, in my opinion. Indeed it is. But the things he says in interviews and even sometimes in his lyrics are strange. Yeah. And there's a reason. And often you see a lot of people in the creative uh, side of things. They tend to uh, express their pain in their art. They express their pain that's within them. Now, it's all good to get therapy and to heal up, but the question is, are you giving a message on repeat? Are you just re-soaking in your sorrows? A lot of these folks have not healed past their traumas, and they spread their pain to their audience, and it's an unfortunate thing. When I ever was with that I cared about pleasing, yes. It's a release. Right. I didn't get an a, a on my report. Your dick report card, yeah. Yeah, so I want to always, you know, this is a brand name. I want to always have a good report, you know, and I and I mean that with all due respect to whoever listening. You know what I'm saying? Listen, buddy. We I see that's that lets you know the nature of a man. If a man overprides himself and his prowess, that shows you where he's focused, and that's generally quite an immature thing that you're hyper focused on physically performing or even satisfying the female. Now a chick who's a might be pleased with this kind of guy, but one thing I've always known is that it's a lot of guys who's, who are gonna be out there slinging dingling more proficiently than Marquette Devon Burton, and that's primarily because I've not made that a priority. My true priority is I wanna f her mind, you dig? I wanna stick that deep into her brain, yeah and get to a point where no man has gone before. That's really what I'm trying to do. So to please her body is really nothing. And in fact, a woman that you've properly doctor filled, you did, you properly implanted that is a in her, she don't even care about that physical stuff, huh? She'd be pleased that you're proud of her, huh? She'd be pleased that you let her touch you. She'd be pleased to cook you up your favorite meal, huh? It is the mental that makes your relationship last over time. And there's a lot of cats who gonna outperform you in that bedroom. If you're measuring yourself up on that, you're gonna, you're gonna take a lot of L's. And if your female is focused on that, she gonna be in them streets, I promise you. Yes. She gonna be in them streets looking for Mr. Marcus. I look at a woman like Art. I ain't to please my partner, my pleasure, pleasure activist. Mm. I get off on seeing whoever I'm intimate. That's cool, bro. Now. One thing I also don't respect is using this term partner, not realizing that this comes from the Skittle guzzling community. And as a, a Muslim, a, a brother following the Dean, this uh, practice, just like Christianity and uh, Judaism, is diametrically opposed to that lifestyle. Hence, a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew would rightly use the term wife or husband. Using partner is a term that removes gender from the discussion, and that ain't that ain't how we live in. You heard me? If you're a man, you have a wife. If you're a woman, you have a husband. Hollywood impressive writes, I don't see how his...
this interview benefits Kevin Gates, but this is today's hip hop culture, peculiar and suspect. Well, it certainly keeps his name in the gossip mill and it keeps him you know, being talked about by many media outlets. After all, we're talking about him. I trust there's someone in the chat who've never heard of Kevin Gates before now, and now they have. So in as much as that's the case, from a business perspective, he's been able to cultivate the media. And so we have to acknowledge that there's some meaning there in terms of him making a buck. One thing I always tell you is that once you lose that reputation, you know, reputations take time to build. They take seconds to destroy and they can never be rebuilt, you dig? Someone can put a lie out on you that you can never recover from. So a man must protect his reputation with great care. And that is something that comes from men being focused on honor. Am I an honorable man? And if you're not an honorable man, you won't be honored, you dig? And your kid's gonna have to live under the name of a man who is a dirtbag, carrying on. Oh, and this is where it gets real funny, and by the way, DJ Academics, you need to quit eating, you know, and I've never met you, no disrespect, but bruh, you don't need to be fat like that in your youth, you're still a young man, bruh, quit eating so damn much and relax during your interviews, can somebody pour DJ Academics a shot, why are you so damn nervous during his interviews, always repeating his goddamn questions, you think after all this time of interviewing people, he'd be able to just spit out the goddamn question pretty smoothly, like, you know, he's had some practice, damn. I just hate watching all of this. Like, come on, can we get some professionalism? Anyways, thanks for the content. In a way. Why? Because that's my wife. And you're talking about her. I don't her like want that. nobody that don't nobody want. If, if, if you was fan, fantasizing about my wife and beating your thinking about my wife, when I punch in her, I'm living your dream. I'm winning. He, but if I vocalize that, like, oh man. That's just how if you. If I feel. could get with. with why you you be like hey, that's disrespect for you disrespect no, me you don't think so? Shit, how you just saying what everybody thinking? You think when a see a beautiful woman he don't want to punch? In he want see that's one of the major differences in how we understand masculinity in the past and today. In the past there was a code that men lived by. Men were taciturn, a few words, strong, silent type. Now they babble like on Instagram and TikTok and try to do, you know, like funny things to get you to laugh. Imagine a grown man trying to make you laugh like he's a child. It's really silly and sad. But, you know, academics brings up some reasonable points, so they're presented in quite a, a stampering way. And what can you expect? The boy's wearing a, a sweatshirt. I hope they chipped him out for that, you dig? If so, shout out. That's good business. Uh, but Gates is essentially saying his same story of, you know, I'm going to express myself. And to me, that's a very clear mark of being a feminine individual. You ever notice that women can't help but express themselves? Even when they've said enough, they want to say some more. That is the nature of the female, not the nature of the male. I tell you, like, hey, it's all good that your therapist said, you know, you need to let it out. I'm telling you the opposite. Hold it in. Some things you just need to hold in. Some things you just need to deal with. That's the nature of being a man. The fact that you can hold it in and do what you got to do. If you haven't read my book, The Black Box, I recommend you read it. There's a chapter in there where I describe a series of traumatic events that I suffered in my youth, a series of traumas. And then I had to go on stage and perform. And I went and performed like nothing happened to me because that's how it gets sometimes. In the real world, especially as a man, no one cares what happened to you. Nobody cares. And guess what? At the end of the day, your bills still got to get paid. Your kids still got to eat. And your wife still wants you to be mentally stable. Her rock. You can't be her rock when you don't want crying. I don't want nobody that don't nobody want. I'm human. I can have a crush on somebody. I can like somebody. Damn, what? I can't like somebody because I'm Kevin Gates? I'm human. What's she married, though, man? You wouldn't give a f what she is. I don't know. I don't know them people, so they got dudes academic. in jail right now. She married, though, man. Academics, man, sit up straight and tell that man what's on your mind. Somebody share the word with him. How they see Nicki Minaj come on TV and be like, ooh, wow, f the s out that Yeah, but the, 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 not oh, I'm in, in love industry. with her. They're not in the industry. I though. want her. I don't care. I'm speaking for them then. The only thing I'm going to say, though, because you did a. And respectfully, what I'll do, respect, I think you're a beautiful woman. If I catch you right, I'm going to stamp you. You're a beautiful woman. What up? 
<laughs> oh, man. You mentioned a bunch of things. Hold on, hold on. What happened with your money by yo? Nothing. Listen to the song. Oh, that's still my brother. Everything, everything is cool. Yeah, it ain't got no choice. I love that song because it was venting. It ain't got no choice but to be one with. Is academics just a cornball or is he nervous? Is he scared or is he just a cornball? I'd be curious. I'd be curious. And I only say that because when I think about the cats I grew up with and I look at these internet guys, I'm like, God, man, I don't remember black people being like this. Like, whatever happened to that smoothness? Where's the butter at? Ah, but again, I appreciate him putting out the content, you know. And one thing I want to let you all know is that the reason you see so many of these squares winning is because they've been diligent and the emotions that drive them is that they're sinking distinction, you dig? So like if you fast forward or like rewind back to high school, say a guy like academics, you know, people probably slapped his milk off his lunch tray, you dig? You know, he, he was not the super. And so he used to look at a cat like me like, oh man, I want to win like that. And so then he got his money right through diligence. And whereas guys who are in my position, they, they weren't moving like me, right? Like they weren't cool and smart and hardworking. They might've been cool, but they had other characteristics. And that's why when you look today and you see people in academics position, which is a position of success, the cool guy, he ain't had a work ethic. He might've been born good looking, tall, strong, athletic. He ain't had a work ethic. He ain't had a mindset, the right ideas going through his mind. And that's why we got to suffer watching the academics do what he do stammering through the interview because he's the one that put himself in position. You heard me? He delivered himself to that position. So shout out to him and shout out to the other corn balls who put themselves in position. I'm proud of you guys. For real. It's the most disrespectful compliment you ever heard. Carrying on. Play with me because I'm not going to change. I'm not going to never not love you. And my Muslim brother, I ain't going to never not love you. Not far as me speaking on, I ain't got nothing to talk about to speak on nothing about nothing because I just don't do that. Do those situations, do they turn the phone calls off? Mm. Because even with you, like, I know a lot of people react to Ruby Rose reacted kind of, look like Ruby Rose is saying what's good. She Muslim. She a beautiful woman. You see, like, a lot he's invoking the, the deen of Islam. And even when I was following Islam, Low key, you would never hear me bring it up because I never felt like I was a proper representative of that tradition. You know, there's still a lot of things that I didn't represent well. And there's a level of humility you have to have when there's something greater than you, something divine, and you're representing it in a, a vulgar context. Anyways, uh, shout out to Asia. Always good to see the lady saying she writes, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. That means a lot. Come on, man, I fantasize about you, a beautiful woman. You had such a great interview with Carisha. That I remember my friend, he asked me this, I'm like, no, nah, I don't think Kevin's like that, but I'm going to ask him when I see him. You said in the interview, you said, what'd you say? You say, um, if your girl was sleeping with somebody else, you were like, yo, or as long as you watch the video or some like that. I can't remember what it was. It was like, yo. On the song, shoot my shot. I give you guys some advice and, and feel free to forward this to act. If you're going to say something, just say it. You don't have to pad it up. It, it is what it is. And especially when you're talking to someone like Gates, he grimy hood dude. He don't want to hear all this extra stuff. I damn sure don't want to hear all this extra stuff. You know, he's going to react how he's going to react. So you don't have to dress it all up. Just say what you're saying, bro. Long story short, academics is saying, Gates, I heard you's a weirdo. You, let me be his translator. Gates, someone send this out. Gates, I heard you're a weirdo. I heard you like to um, watch your girl get rained or uh, railed or trained choo -choo, by a bunch of dudes, like a whole football team is just running through your girl draws and you want it to be recorded and you want to watch it back with her. I think that's weird. Tell me about that. That's what you're trying to say. Go ahead and say it. Because the thing is, Gates is in a different space. He just going to respond to you calmly. He doesn't perceive you to be a threat. You damn near ain't got no testosterone. huh? Just say what you're going to say, bro. Anyways, I... Apologize, no disrespect. That's what the young people now, they, they, they say, they disrespect you and then they say, no disrespect. <laughs> yeah, like me punching and yeah, walking yeah. with another man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would love to do that. Then somebody says, it's but it gotta be a man that respect the woman like I respect her. It's a lot of women fantasize about that. They just have a fear of judgment. Oh, no, no, I'm, but, in a, I'm in all that. But, but no, no, you, is set, you said to Young Miami, you were like, yo, if you go sleep with somebody, bring the see that right there. That's where it went too far. 
I remember, you know, back in the day, you 16 years old, ain't enough to go around. <laughs> There's a shortage, call the police. Somebody stole all the hoes. You got one chick, she's, we used to call him a flipper. You heard me, a flipper. Call her a flip, flea I yip. You know, she a flip and do tricks for everybody. She let everybody get a little piece. You know, you 16, half the chicks is actual back in the day. So you got this one chick who just with so you like, all right, man, we just going to both wear shorty out, bring the whole gang, you know, and you go ahead and put her on the hood. You feel me? She didn't let every damu suwo. But that's not an ideal situation. He said he like he likes that. That's like a situation where there's a shortage. You feel me? That's like kind of one of those things where, you know, in times of war, if there's like a famine and there's a food shortage and somebody die, you might have to like be a cannibal and eat the person who died. But nobody, like, after they leave that environment, is like, hey, um, I want to eat Bobby. Like, nah, we're not doing that for fun. You did that because there was a scarcity. You feel me? Um, this is weird. Because at the end of the day, like, I really don't want nobody else's meat out when my meat is out. You feel me? Nah, this is a one piece of meat sandwich. He like a double-double. You heard me? Two, two sausages on the pat. It's crazy, man. And that's where you know, like, homie kind of weird. And he having trouble being real with his because that's not normal. And there is a there is an origin for this perversion. And stay tuned. I, I will be getting into it. Huh? Video back that right. we can watch. And I'm like, hold up, man. You my favorite. What up? Nah, that's, look, that's my homie's like, nah, you gotta ask me if he's, because they said that's like white people stuff. Cause that's what. I guess so, but I got a big So I ain't tripping on it. Like. So number one, you notice that Academics uses distancing language. He's constantly saying, oh, my homie said, you know, you you said this, or I, I watched this and people was asking this. Academics, just say, I saw you say this, and I, DJ Academics, think this, or have this question. Quit shuffling and tap dancing all the time, bruh. And that's why cats like academics, I know they pay for I know they do. Because a real female don't want to date a female. You heard me? She want a real man that can stand on his word. Like, bro, just say what, what you mean, man. Man, you didn't make this damn interview 30 times longer than it had to be by repeating yourself 30 times and finding all of these flowery words. We call it a euphemistic circumlocution when you won't just say what it is. Black folks, we have a saying, make it plain. Huh? Another man penetrated a woman you were interested in or dealing with. No, because that's just me and her have a psychokinetic relationship. Our no, relationship is deeper than just. You're not talking to me. I fantasize about, you know, if I'm with you, you know, hey, listen, I, you the object of my, you you the object of my fantasy. Now you my fantasy, but you my favorite. What you mean? We can explore every avenue that you want to. I love you like that. One thing I got to. You know, acknowledge that Gates is saying that a lot of you guys won't be able to relate to. And I can't even relate to at a high level, but I understand it because a lot of people I grew up with have done serious time and they've been in and out of jail their whole life. You know, my father's been in and out of jail his whole life and my whole life. My uncles, you know, my aunties, and my mom, my grandma, like everybody done, done time. And when a man is doing a lot of time, now you can't realistically expect that your female is going to be 100% solid. It's unlikely. And so for him to have a tolerance of his female dealing with other guys and getting maxed out, maybe by cats like me, um, I understand that because there's really nothing he can do. And at the end of the day, he's just fortunate enough to have somebody to put a couple of dollars on his book, send him a, send him a package every now and then, you know, be an ear to his begging when he gets that time to hop on one of the jacks. So that's just jail stuff. You feel me? That's cats who have been institutionalized. He had to make that psychological adjustment. Now he's out in the free world. You know, I get that. I get that he's, you know, he's had that life experience. So I do want to acknowledge that that's, that's a real thing um, that he's experienced. I want to honor that and not pretend as though he's a total weirdo. You know, he's experienced a, a part of life that hopefully most of us never have to deal with carrying on. I ain't no please you what's happening. And then I'm just all the way Okay, so let me then ask you the, the question. I, Do I have insecurities with that? We have measuring contests with other men, but I don't have that because I'm blessed already. I'm not worried about, babe, his was bigger than mine. I don't, I don't care about all that. Well, I look at it like if, if, if 
with my woman, I don't want anybody able to be have it. I want something. All right, I got selfish. a question. Um, what's that girl name that said she had over three hundred baddies? Um, it's a lot of them. That's a lot of bodies. That's a lot of chicks that that have done that. And you know, the the sick sad thing nowadays is women in 2022 they can't even remember their body count in fact i don't even think they try to keep track of it anymore it low-key they ain't even count all the bodies half the time right they only count the body if they're in a relationship with you so i'm just saying she's not a beautiful woman yeah yeah that's like you don't know if you will sit down and have a conversation with that woman i don't know i don't see a lot of times we let fear hold us back from doing what's gonna be you ego dealing with a that done been locked up his whole life, you know what I'm saying? Damn this. So if I meet a woman and she done been active, hey, I don't give a about all that. That's so funny to see DJ Academics react like that when we all know that he out here paying these, right? We all know he out here paying these dealing with sugar babies and the whole nine. So he's dealing with chicks who are in the industry. So if anyone has 300 bodies, it would be the girls he's dealing with. And I think that he is you know, putting himself under delusion and historically it's the man that should be the one who's willing to deal with reality it's the female that we sell the dream to but some of us males sell dreams to ourselves and it's really a tragic thing huh i don't live for what other people think about me if i like it i like it that's just me i don't care what man that nigga, hey y'all can eat my i don't care what y'all think what y'all eat don't make me he said this this interview feminizes hip-hop Look, man, the interview ain't feminized hip hop. A little Nas X then feminized it, but check this out. For many years, the African American, and let us be clear that hip hop music is a creation of the African American. It is black music. It is expressive of the African American underclass. Not to say no one else can do it, but that's where it comes from. It is black music. And black people in America have had their culture taken and commercialized. They've allowed it to happen. And they've often looked to media, television, radio, etc., to find out who they are. And so they learned what it is to be black from the TV, from the news, from the social media. And so they're really, it's unique in that they're one of the only cultures that allows people outside of their culture to tell them what they are. Just consider the fact that the NAACP was an organization founded by whites. You know, so many things, when you peel under it, you find out that the foundations and the root of it are not quite pure. But beyond race, uh, because I am not one who's into race, what I'm into is, are you a good person, of which there are few? And if someone's saintly in nature, you dig, I'm going to go ahead and rock with you. And that's why what I share is for all of mankind, you know, is for the real ones.